Good morning. I am Pastor Prelo, the pastor of Christ United Methodist Church in Baltimore City. And I want to thank you. We here at Christ United Methodist Church want to thank you for worshiping with us this morning virtually. We thank God for the many ways in which God has allowed us to worship in this season during this pandemic. We just thank God for just modern technology and our ability to just use modern technology to spread God's word and to worship with each other. So we thank you whether you're worshiping with us on Facebook, you you are watching us on YouTube, you are joining us on, on Zoom. We thank God for the many ways in which God has allowed us to worship together. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name. There is God in the midst. So I just thank God for God's presence being with us this morning. I just thank God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth through all generation. I pray God, I pray this morning that something that's said, that's a song that's sung, I pray that you will be touched this morning by this worship service. I'm going to invite Pastor Wayne, our musician, to come and lead us in worship. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, you are very great. Let us continue to bless the Lord as we gather today to serve him. Let us bless him at all times. We praise you, O oh God. We honor you with our whole heart, in truth and in spirit. We thank you 
for your son Jesus Christ who made the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. For those of us who believe in him, we earnestly ask that we be forgiven for our transgressions. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us together once again to worship you and your son, Jesus Christ. While we are not physically able to be together in a building of worship, we are grateful for the opportunity to worship you virtually. We are thankful for those members of Christ Church who are worshiping with us today, as well as for those who join us in service today, but who may not be members of Christ Church. We pray for those members of our congregation who are unable to be with us because of illness or whatever reason. We are thankful, O oh God, for having seen the light of another day. We thank you for allowing us to be able to discern the change of seasons and to appreciate the beauty of the coming fall. We thank you for protecting us from the coronavirus, which has affected us all in some way. We are grateful that you have enabled us to be of service to others in this time of need. We pray, O oh God, that you will protect members of this body of Christ and others throughout the country and the world who have been adversely affected by the virus. We pray that you would bless and protect us all. We pray that a cure will soon be found for this deadly disease. We especially pray for the parents of school-aged children and college students who are challenged to make the right decisions about their education, their welfare, and their future. We pray that you will protect us all and our children of God. We pray for the spiritual growth of this body of Christ and our leader. Continue to help and strengthen her as she strives to guide us spiritually. Help us, the members of this congregation, O oh Lord, to be dedicated and strong followers of Jesus Christ. Let us strive to become more involved in the study of what it means to be a true Christian. O oh Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us along our spiritual journey. These and all other blessings we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, we just want to thank you for being with us this morning at Christ United Methodist Church. We just want to thank you um, for that. It is given time. It is time for us to give back to God a portion of that which God has graciously and extravagantly blessed us with. We here at Christ United Methodist Church, we want to first thank you for what you have already given to this ministry. And we want to thank you for just sowing a seed into this ministry. And we thank God because ministry still goes on. We thank God for our outreach ministry that's still out in the community and making that impact for the kingdom of God. Here at Christ United Methodist Church, there is four ways in which you can give. You can go to our website at www.christumc. 21213.org. That's www.christumc21213.org. You can also download the app Givelify. You can download the app Givelify on your smartphone and look for Christ. United Methodist Church, Baltimore City. You can also text to give. You can text the word give, that's G-I-V-E, to 410-632-6452. Again, text the word give to 410 410- 
632-6452. And also, there is still snail mail. You can still use mail. You can um, mail your check to 2005 East Chase Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21213. That's Christ United Methodist Church, 2005 East Chase Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21213. And you can write your checks out to Christ United Methodist Church. We thank you already for your giving. Let us pray. God, we just thank you, God, for the many gifts in which you have already given us. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus. We here at Christ United Methodist Church, that we will be good stewards over that which you have trusted in our hands. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. You're the center of my joy All that's good and perfect comes from you You're the heart of my contentment Hope for all I do Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fire and light when nights are long and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter that shatters all my fears. When I'm all alone, your hand is there to hold. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy all that's good and perfect comes from you you're the heart of my contentment hope for all I do oh Jesus you're the center my joy You are why I find pleasure In the simple things in life You're the music In the meadows and the streams The voices of the children my family and my home you're the source and finish of my highest dream oh jesus you're the center of my joy my joy all that's good and perfect comes from you you're the heart of my contentment hope for all i do oh jesus you are you're the center 
of my joy. Jesus, you are, you're the center of my joy. You're my music, you're my song, you're my hope all day long. When I'm lonely, feeling sad, you are the lifter of my head. You're my music, you're my song, you're my hope all day long. You're everything, everything, you're my Good morning. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for being with us this morning virtually. Whether you are on YouTube, you are on Facebook, or you are on Zoom, Welcome to our virtual worship for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. If you are visiting with us, if you are visiting with Christ United Methodist Church this morning, we want to welcome you to our worship. It is preaching time. It is preaching time. And the word of God this morning will come from Psalm 146. Psalm 146. We are traveling through the book of Psalms. And this morning we are in Psalm 146. And so I'm going to read that in your hearing. Psalm 146 says, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will bless the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes and a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth on that very day his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice to the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord set the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. That's Psalm 146. And I want to preach from the topic this morning, Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. My brothers and sisters, the last two weeks, we had an opportunity to listen to the Democratic National Convention and the Republic National Convention. Some of us watched one, some of us watched both, and some of us watched none. And it depends on what side of the political debate you are on determines the impact of what you experienced over the past two weeks. 
We listen to speech after speech on both sides of the debate to convince voters to lean on one side or the other. Emotions in our country are running high. It appears we as a country are in the fight of our lives. African Americans are fighting for justice and equality daily being pushed to the limit demanding that the knee of our oppressor be released off our necks. I hear the cries of our brothers and sisters from the streets of America, no justice, no peace, black lives matter. Not to mention my brothers and sisters, last Sunday, once again, we learned of the shooting of a black man in America. We learned of the shooting of Jacob Blake, another black man shot by the police. It left many of us shaking our heads, wondering when will this end? We are wondering, wondering if there ever will be a time when our country will recognize the ills of its ways and the impact of racial inequality on our past, our present, and our future. Not to mention that we all have our own struggles. We are trying to live within the confines of COVID-19, still distant from our loved ones, doing life different these days praying for our children, going back to school, caught up in this debate of virtual or in-person learning. I must say, my brothers and sisters, we are pulled in so many directions and the weight of sadness lingers in the air. As I pondered this week in the book of Psalms, the book I've been preaching from this month, God spoke to me through Psalm 146, an encouraging word for these times like this. It's a word that reminds us who is worthy of our praise. It reminds us to turn our attention towards God, a word that reminds us to not put our trust in our fellow beings. Our ultimate trust should be in God, the maker and ruler of heaven and earth. A word that reminds us that God is the God of the oppressed and that God shows up in unexpected places with unexpected people. My brothers and sisters, Psalm 146 start with a personal declaration of praise for God. The psalmist starts with praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. The psalmist reminds us that God is worthy of our praise. God, the supreme ruler of heaven and earth. God, the one who was there in the beginning and will be there in the end. God, the alpha and the omega. God is worthy of our praise. My brothers and sisters, the psalmist remind us that God was worthy of our praise yesterday. God is worthy of our praise today and God will be worthy of our praise tomorrow. I know some of you are saying it is hard to praise in the midst of what I'm going through. As a matter of fact, it's hard to turn my attention to anything other than what's going on in the news and what's going on in our country. My brothers and sisters, I understand that, but praise is a choice it's not a feeling. You have to make a personal declaration to give God a praise in spite of the circumstances because praise does because praise does set the atmosphere for what's happening next in our lives. Praise positions us to handle life's ups and downs. Praise remind us of who God is. Praise shifts us in our thinking. The psalmist made a promise to praise God as long as he lives. He understands the worth of praise. See, praise clears the mind. It places God in the forefront of our lives. Praise, it gives us peace. I dare you this morning to make this 
this your personal declaration. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. No matter what's going on, I will praise the Lord. No matter what it looks like, I will praise the Lord. No matter if it's working or if it's not working, I will praise the Lord because praise is not predicated on the worth of the praiser, but in the one I am to give my praise. I will praise God as long as I live. I dare you this morning to praise God in spite of what it looks like. I dare you this morning to give God the honor and give God the praise no matter what's going on in our country. No matter if, 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 no matter if what's saying you believe it or not, I dare you this morning to give God the praise. I dare you this morning in spite of who's in the White House, in spite of what's going on. I dare you declare as the psalmist said that I will praise God as long as I live. I dare you this morning to give God the praise. I dare you to lift up the name of God no matter where you are. I dare you to lift God up this morning. I dare you to give God the praise because God is worthy of our praise. God is worthy of our praise, my brothers and my sisters. God is worthy of our praise no matter where we find ourselves. God is worthy of our praise. And I want to say this morning, don't lose focus of who God is. Don't lose focus of who's in control. Don't lose focus that we serve a God that sits high and look low. Don't lose focus of who God is. My brothers and sisters, not only did the psalmist uh, understand who is worthy of our praise, but the psalmist uh, understood that we must put uh, our trust in God uh, and not in human beings. Let me say that again, that the psalmist uh, understand that we must put our trust in God uh, and not in human beings. Uh, see, Psalm 146 reminds us uh, to whom we are to trust and to whom uh, we are to not put our trust in. It reminds us uh, that our deliverance and salvation come from God. That God is the one who saves us. That God is the one who delivers us. That God is the one who keeps us. God is the one who gives us peace. God is the mind regulator. God is the one who sustains us. God is the one who provides for us. God is the one who heals us. God is the keeper of our soul. The, re the psalmist remind us that we should not put our trust in human beings. The psalmist said, put not your trust in princes in a son of man in whom there is no salvation because man can't save you. The psalmist remind us to put our trust in God. The psalmist says, when his breath, talking about uh, mankind, when his breath departs, uh, he returned to the earth. Uh, on that very day, his plan perish. Uh, we cannot put our total trust, uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, in leadership. Uh, see, people who are in control uh, are only, people who are in control uh, are only in control uh, as long as they live. Uh, See, plans perish uh, when people perish. Uh, when they are gone, all their plans leave uh, with them. Their dreams and their schemes uh, leave with them. God, uh, on the contrary, uh, is the maker of heaven and earth. Uh, and it is God uh, who remains forever. Uh, see, when all of this is gone, uh, God will still remain. Uh, we must remember, uh, especially during times like these, uh, that if we put our trust in humanity, Humanity, it will leave us with no hope. Uh, but when we put our total trust in God, uh, we understand that all things uh, work together for the good or for those uh, who love the Lord and called uh, according to God's purpose. Uh, see, when we put our trust uh, in God, uh, we understand uh, that God is in the background uh, working things out for our good. Uh, see, when we put uh, our trust in God, uh, we understand uh, that God is the master planner and God hold the master blueprint to everything in life. When we put our trust in God, we understand who God is. My brothers and sisters, when we put our
about trusting God. See, we understand what God can do. We understand that we serve a big God and that what we're going through is no match for our God. See, when we put our trust in God, it says that I understand that yea, through our walk, through the valley of shadow of death, that I shall fear no evil. When I put my trust in God, see, I understand that no matter what goes on in my life, that God has complete control. When I put my trust in God, I understand that no matter what goes on with the Democrats or no matter what goes on with the Republicans, that God is still in control. See, when I put my trust in God, I understand that we serve a big God. I understand that we serve a big God. See, my brothers and sisters, when we go back to the book of Genesis, it tells us from day one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, who made the heavens and the earth? Who put the stars in the sky? Who made the seas? Who made the sky? It even tells us who made man. It was God, and it is God who is still in control of what's going on in our lives. I want to bring you some hope this morning. Don't put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in mankind. Don't put your trust in people. Put your ultimate trust in God because when people fail you, God is still there. When people falter and people fail, guess what? God is still there. God is still there. God is still there. My brothers and my sisters, the psalmist also reminds us that blessed is those who depend on God. For God is the God of the oppressed. God has a special concern for the least, the lost, and the left out. If this morning you're feeling like you're far in one of those categories. You feel like you are part of the least. You feel like you are part of the left, uh, the, the lost, and you are feeling left out this morning. I want to tell you that we serve a God who is the God of the oppressed. He's the God of the downtrodden. He's the God of the depressed. He's the God, my brothers and sisters, of those, Lord, Lord have mercy. See, he's the God of those, my brothers and sisters, who feel like that there's nowhere, there's, there's nobody on their side. We serve a God. God has a special concern for the least, the lost, and the left out. God is the God of the downtrodden. The Bible said, blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob. Blessed is the one whose help is in God. Blessed is the one whose hope is in the Lord, his God. Where is your hope this morning? What are you hoping in? Blessed is the one whose hope is in his God. His God, the one who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. The one who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. See, it is the Lord who set the prisoners free. It is the Lord who opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. 
The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked, he is the one who pulls it down. My brothers and my sisters, it is God who will execute justice. It, will, it is God who will set us free. It is God who will change the mind of his people. Nobody, I'm reminded, is out of reach from God. I don't care who you are. You are not out of the reach of our God. For we serve a powerful God, an awesome God. And God watches over the least, the lost, and the left out. My brothers and sisters, it is God who keeps us in times like these. Times like these when people go in the hospital and never come out. Times like these when people are, want, are wondering about unemployment. Times like these when people when, when, when food lines are long. Times like these when every day we face with another untimely death. My brothers and sisters, it is God who keeps us in time like these and I know you have your own times like these so you can add your own situation to this it is God who keeps us in times like these times like these when the year 2020 feel like a never ending movie times like these when there is one protest after another it is God who runs to our rescue for God is our deliverer God is our healer. God is our sustainer. God is our present help in the time I need of need. My brothers and sisters, keep your trust in God. For God promised to never leave us or forsake us. My brothers and sisters, Keep your trust in God, for God promised to be there with us. Keep your trust in God, for God promised that yea, through we walk through the valley of shadow of death, that we shall fear no evil. Keep your trust in God, for God promised to be there with us wherever we go. Keep your trust in God, for God promised that all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord. And are called according to his purpose. Keep your trust in God. For God promised that if we will trust him and lean not on our own understanding, God promised to direct our path. Keep your trust in God. Be not dismayed, whatever betides. God will take care of you. My brothers and sisters, God promised that he will be there for us. So keep your trust in God no matter what it looks like no matter what you feel like no matter what's going on keep your trust in our God now is not the time to give up now is not the time to throw in the towel now is not the time to, to, to have a pity party now is not the time for that put your trust in God Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Turn your face towards our God. And do like the psalmist said. And praise the Lord. He said, I will praise the Lord as long as I live. As long as I live. Make that declaration this morning that you will praise God. That you will put your trust in God. And praise God. As long as you live. And I know my brothers and sisters, sometimes that's hard to do. It is in the midst of what we're going through. It's hard to continue to keep praising day after day after day after day. When it seems like you're part of the least, the lost and the left out. But let me tell you, you might feel like that. But let me tell you, God is right there with you. No matter what we feel like, God is right there with us. So we can't lose faith and we can't lose hope because we serve a God. We serve a God that sits high 
but look slow. We serve a God that's a present help in the time of need. We serve a God that said that God would never leave us or forsake us. So we take God at God's word. Put your trust in God this morning. Put your trust in God. My brothers and sisters, I challenge you, I dare you this morning to put your trust in God. My brothers and sisters, if you are joining us this morning, you're joining us this morning and you say, Pastor, I'm struggling right now. I'm having a hard time right now. And I want to put my trust in God. I want to do that this morning. I want to do that this morning. I'm struggling. Let me have a word of prayer with you. And I want to pray for that one that know God. You have a relationship with God, but you're still struggling. And I also want to pray for that person that don't have a relationship with God. You don't have a relationship with God. You don't know what it what it what it's like to have Jesus as your savior, to confess Jesus as your savior. You don't know what it's like to do that. I want to pray for you as well. Let us pray. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus that we come. I pray God in the name of Jesus. You, God, the one God who knows everything. The one who knows everybody. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus for your people this morning. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, those who feel like they're losing hope this morning. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus that you will restore hope to them this morning. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus that they will not be weary in well-doing. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus that they will lean on you, God, and not to their own understanding. God, and I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, you say that if we do that, that you will direct our path. So I pray, God, in the name of Jesus that you will direct their path. God, make every crooked path straight this morning in the name of Jesus. God, touch your people in a mighty and an awesome way. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, touch your people this morning, God. There's people that's losing hope, and I pray, God, for restoration of hope this morning. And then, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, for that person that might not know you, God. They don't have a relationship with you. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will touch them in a real way. God, I pray that they will come to know you this morning, God. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God. I pray, God, that they will come crying out, what must I do to be saved, God? Let them know, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that they're never without your reach, God, that they're never without your presence, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, continue to draw them closer to you, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for their presence here this morning, God, for everybody that's under the sound of my voice. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for your word because you teach us that word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So I pray, God, in the name of Jesus. God, that the word that was spoken this morning will be an encouragement to your people this morning. I thank you. It's in the name, in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're under the sound of my voice this morning and you say, I want to know Jesus. The Bible tells us in Romans that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is, is the son of God and that God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says that you shall be saved. The Bible teaches us in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be set free. 
if that's you this morning and you want to experience the freedom of being in Jesus, I want to invite you to that this morning. And I pray as I was praying and you made a confession to God this morning. You say, Pastor, that's me. I'm praying for you. Even after we get off of this call, I'm praying, I, I'm praying for you. If that's you this morning, I just want you to write in the comments, I want to connect. I want to connect. And we're going to connect with you. And if, 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 if you are on this call and you say, Pastor, I, I, I know God as my Savior, but I don't have a church home. I want you to, to write the word, I want to connect in the comments and we're going to get in touch with you as a matter of fact you can call the church at 410-732-5600 410-732-5600 call the church leave your name and your number and we will get back in touch with you or you can email the church at cum church at verizon.net that's cum church at verizon.net and we will get back in touch with you. Amen and God bless you. I am praying for each and every one of you. God bless you this morning. And I pray as we dismiss from each other this morning that may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you today henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say amen. God bless you.